Hello, I'm going to be awkward because I don't usually record videos. I'm a streamer. I don't know how to do planned content. This is a tutorial on how to uh, rig a character model if uh, the whole head goes towards VR chat at the end. Or anything else that uses that kind of armature setup. There's, a quite, a, there's quite a few things I've learned in my time with rigging and modeling and all that that I don't see a lot on YouTube, so I'm just putting this out in the world. One of the main things you're gonna want is definitely the Cat's Blender add-on. It's very practical for these purposes, and you'll need it eventually anyway for uh, importing your model into VR chat and whatnot. So, once you have that in, you should have a VRM humanoid armature here. Now you might notice that the uh, bone's a little too small. That's not too hard. One thing of note is I would recommend going to uh, the viewport display under this uh, bone tab. Uh, the thing above the bone tab that looks like a little thick man. And click show in front. Now your bones are going to show through the model at all times. It's very useful. Now just now this part is pretty simple. You uh, take the bones, you put them where they should go. I find it helpful to enable uh, wireframe under here, because then you can line it up with the wireframe. Good for the it's good for the elbows, the knees, all that stuff. But once it's like kind of sized to where it needs to be, go into edit mode by pressing tab on the armature. And the fun part about this is you can actually delete half of the model here. Of the another model, the armature. You can delete half of the armature here. Because later we'll we'll use a blender feature to symmetrize. Hey, please. I didn't select the whole thing. Okay. This does. This usually doesn't take too long. It might take a little longer if your model is not in a perfect T-pose. Because that does make things a little harder, considering that it's not like shaped exactly like a T-pose. From the get-go. This will probably not work for full body tracking because that I don't know how to set that up yet. But from here you simply put the bones in their orientation using some very simple uh, knowing how to move around the uh, keyboard. Are putting the bones in place, you want to like put, put the first knuckle more inward on the finger and not directly at the edge of it. If you hold control like this, you can go through increments of the movement. It's very practical a lot of the time. If you hold shift and control, it makes it slower. I do have the uh, screencast keys over there, so that's helpful for anyone. Although I do press these keys very fast. Little pro tip, the tip of your finger does not have that long of a bone. It's mostly the metal and first bones that are very long. On my mesh here, I have like two edges, and this bone will start at this this one. I have this cockily, I can't numbers too well.
here's a tip for uh, aligning the uh, eyeball with the uh, actual eyeball that's in your model, if your model uses eyeballs, that is. You're gonna want to go into uh, object mode, into your model, go to edit mode on the on the eyeball. If it's still like fully modeled, you should be able to uh, right click. Uh, where is it? Okay, so once you're into edit mode on your eyeball, you're gonna want to go to uh, mesh, snap, cursor to select it. That's important. Now, the 3D cursor is in the middle of the sphere, which is where you want the angle of rotation to be on that bone, because when you move it, it does this. It looks like that. I forgot to, to uh, mirror that. No. See? If it's on the middle, like it is now, it rotates per correctly. I'm gonna go to back to this. Right click, snap. Selection to cursor. And boom! There's your bone. It's exactly where it needs to be. Otherwise, it's a lot of trial and error. It's a lot of trial and error. One advice I do have for this is if you uh, if you don't don't have a sphere as the eye, you might wanna put a sphere in its place, angle it about where the iris is, and use that sphere temporarily to snap your cursor there, and snap the bone to that cursor. I hit my keyboard by accident. And uh, yeah, that's that's how I would do that. I don't know how others would do that. Now here comes the fun part. I forgot. Put here. Not difficult. Oh well. Now here comes the fun part. Once you've done this, you've done half the work. And select everything by pressing A, then symmetrize. It uses the names of the bones to uh, symmetrize these things. So like, this eye is called left eye bone. So it takes the word left, puts right instead. And that's how Blender reads bones. Very useful. And it's just... Now, a piece of advice, since you're gonna have to do this down the line anyway, if your model comes in separate pieces, such as like hair, eyes, anything else, you're gonna want to merge all of that by pressing Ctrl J. Your chat just wants a single merge mesh at the end, so might as well. Confined to its whims from the get-go. Now, for rigging, once you've merged everything, you can simply go to the modifiers tab, right here. Add the armature modifier. So like, your armature, there should just be one. Now, piece of advice, enable preserve volume. It just makes it look better. Now, we're ready to start rigging. What you want to do then is simply select your mesh, like your armature. The other way around, sorry. Select your armature, like your mesh, go to the mode tab, go to weight paint. Doing this this way allows you to move the bones while weight painting. Very useful. Now, another piece of advice never ever use auto weights, it's going to be a waste of your time. I'll just be, str uh, be I'll just be direct. 
But wait is a waste of your time. Will not learn, it's not better. But now here's the problem. The bones are kinda huge and hard to make anything visible, right? So what I do is I select the armature, I go to the little stick fan we saw earlier, and I select stick. Now they're very much they're a lot thinner. A lot easier to work with for white painting, so Ash, armature. Gotta wear around, god damn it. Wait, paint. Alright. Oh. Now here's a, a little magic trick for uh, weight painting. Under the options tab here, you have auto normalize. What this does is it erases the weight painting as you go on other bones. So if it overlaps, it deletes itself so that it doesn't overlap. This is very useful. The only trick is to make it work well. You have to take a central bone, usually the hips bone, interestingly enough, and paint the entire thing with full weights. That is to say, red. So, simple enough. You can go to the tool tab here and disable front faces only. That way you touch the backs as well. Accumulate is also a good one to turn on. And just take a big brush and just, just just go to town. Just paint the whole thing. Do a couple clicks, just make sure everything is red and good. Alright, I'm sure everything's good now. Alright, so you wanna select a bone, you press control and then click. If it's pink, that means it has no vertex groups registered to that bone. This is not a problem. If you see that, simply click with a blur tool in the air. If you want to like just confirm that there is a group, uh, wait, a vertex group in that place. So from here, simply uh, start wave painting, basically. I'm only gonna showcase doing it on the arm and on the spine so that you guys have an idea of how this works. So, red means full full weights, which means this will move as a solid. Anything else that's more of a gradient will, uh, will be softer in the way it moves. So now if I move this, you'll see you see that the red part is very strong, while the rest is kind of soft. That's a good thing to keep in mind, it's just a heat map. It's very simple once you get the idea of it. If you have a numpad, use it for uh, visual navigation, it's very useful. As you saw, mine reverses my viewpoint. If I press 1, that's front, and then press 9, that reverses it, so that's the back. And 7 is top. Press 9, it's the bottom. The blur tool is extremely helpful, so simply just click around like this. It'll move out your weights. Make the edges squishier. And uh, now if you do this, you'll notice that the rest of the arm doesn't fucking move. That's fine. That this is what auto normalize is for, because if you go here, there's nothing. So the idea is you start from the bone at the first bone and you can make everything red from I did it wrong on semi-purpose so that I could teach it. So like from here, everything moves. If you get anything that does this exactly the little bit that like keeps extending too much? That might mean you have weights that didn't did not paint enough, or there is a straight weight paint vertice somewhere in your vertex groups. This can happen. What I usually do is I just go through all the vertex groups and just look for anything, and I delete it by using a weight of zero here and just going around painting zero weights. Now, in step, go to the other bone by clicking it. If you want, if you want to paint it 
softer from the get-go, you can lower the strength. Messing with the strength and weight is extremely helpful to uh, weight painting. Don't be afraid to mess with it. It's there to be messed with. F can increase your brush, like I said, go the whole way. Because it just gets deleted further down the line. As you go. Everything you paint over just gets painted over. As you'd expect. See? Ah, and see, we have another, like, little straggling vertice vertex, whatever, I don't know how many. Now what I normally would do is I would just go to all the vertex groups, you can go through them with your arrow keys, it's very helpful. If you want to just like observe the thing and then you move down, down and up, down and up until you find which one's the problem. And it seems I simply didn't didn't wait paint this part enough, so yeah. As you can see, the heat map. Simple. Just works. Ah, there there's more bits here. Yeah, exactly, see? Go back to another vertex vertex group. What paint around with zero? They'll delete anything that was left over. And uh, good to go after that. It's just a lot of this process. Now, if you notice that your arm is kind of moving strangely. Uh, one piece of advice I can give you is go going back to object mode, selecting your armature, and then just simply moving moving the bones in a different position. If you like, move it a little more forward, it might look better. Didn't? Let's just move forward again. See, now all I need to do is white paint this differently. Now if I simply go to lower strength so that I delete lower, I can change how much the inside of the elbow is getting affected. Then mess with the strength, mess with the weights, it's uh, very helpful. Keep the same strength and like simply go around very, very carefully and do this. Always a little bit more blurring with weight paints. Go with a different strength so it doesn't do it so strongly. In real life, your skin does fold, so it's fine if you see any like folding of the model well, when you uh. It painted like this. It's pretty normal. Doesn't look too wrong. Uh, it's pulling a little too much from the back, so simply go around with the lower strength. Smaller brush. Slowly erase from it. Just a little bit. Blurring things. That's like the biggest advice I can give is use a blur tool liberally. Blur tool's your friend. Blur tool is always your friend. Now here's a piece of advice you might seem 
if you might feel as if it looks wrong this way because you can see the wireframe. What I suggest you do just to make sure everything looks okay is to look at it without the wireframes. Label it. See, yeah, well, that looks fine. A little low, low poly, but that's fine. VR chat is very intense with its requirements. But yeah, that's the that's the entire process. This is how we paint. You just do that. Keep doing it till it works. Thank you for watching. I don't care about this channel. Don't like and subscribe. Actually, fuck you.